Hey, what is going on guys? I know I'm a little bit late to the party on this kit, so you've probably seen some of the reviews already, but in case you haven't, or in case you were waiting for my review, today we're going to be taking a look at the RG Hainu. I did the live build of this, if you guys missed that, you can go back and check that out. But as you could rightfully expect, it is an amazing kit packed with detail and color separation and part separation, there's a ton of parts with this kit, so we'll go into all that in detail in today's review, but let's start off with the unboxing and we'll check out the RG Hi new. All right, so it's finally here, and for a big, beautiful kit like this, of course, they went with the larger style box art, which does seem to be the norm for a lot of the real grades coming out these days. But the artwork on the front is in the normal style. You got the CG render of the head on one side, and then the full body on the other side. The name and all your information down there at the bottom. The CG rendering of the head and the entire body here on the front looking very cool with all the markings and everything on there as well. It just looks awesome. On the side of the box we can see this is number 36 in the real grade lineup and on this side of the box we got some more information just talking about everything about the kit in detail, the funnels, the stickers, the articulation, the binders on the back that hold the funnels, separation of different armor panels around on the kit, and then over here we've got a look at what the kit is going to look like straight out of the box with nothing else done on it, just the stickers applied and that's it. And as usual with real grades, it looks fantastic. Around on the other side of the box we have some examples of some action poses using some different weapons like the beam rifle, the beam sabers, and then you get a look at the back side, all the funnels and everything going on in the back. It's also got the bazooka, lots of stuff to play with. Alright, let's go ahead and get the box opened up. Right off the bat you can see that big decal sheet right there. Gonna be plenty of parts with this, all of the different colored armor pieces and all of the inner frame pieces. And once again, this is gonna be an RG kit that doesn't have like the fully constructed inner frame on it like a lot of the earlier RGs did. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the instruction manual here. On the back side is going to be our decal guide and there are of course a lot of decals to go around and put on this kit. It's all gonna be the sticker decals that you have included on that sheet. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Down here at the bottom is also the color chart for you if you want to match the colors that's there in Japanese and in English. On the inside page here we've got a parts list We're laying out all the runners. And we got some information up here in Japanese and in English about the high new Gundam and you can check that out. A little bit further along we've got another information section here about all of the weapons. This section though is only in Japanese but this gives you some details, information about the shield, bazooka, beam rifle, beam sabers and all that. Continuing on, here's another little section just about the fin funnels with some great photos there, but once again all the text is in Japanese. Right, let's go ahead and get on into the contents. Here is the decal sheet. You got those foil decals over there which reflect the light very nicely and then all the marking decals that are going to go around on the kit. We've got runner SB13 for our clear blue beam saber effect parts. Our A runner is here in four colors, one little clear part up there at the top, some off-white at the bottom, that light lavender color, and then that metallic injected orange copperish kind of color over there on the side. Really interesting to see how the color separation is going to be handled for that shield section there. As per usual with the real grade kit, the B runner is our advanced MS joint. In this case, it's number 15, and this was recycled from the new Gundam. So the date on this runner is from 2019. This is just going to be for inside the fin funnels. Runner C1 is going to be some of our white armor pieces, including some parts for the weapons on there. And then Runner C2 is going to be a copy of this runner like so. Runner D is going to be some more white pieces there for the armor and weaponry. Runner E is going to be all of our white pieces for the fin funnels. And this is a recycled runner from the new Gundam, as we can see with the runner marking up here at the top. Once again, this runner from 2019. Runner F is going to be a bunch of our internal parts there in gray. We've got two of this F runner. Runner G is going to be some more internal frame parts, including some gray parts there, again for the weapons and the shield as well. Runner H1 here is going to be in blue for some of our blue accent colors. And then Runner H2 is going to be some more of our blue parts. Runner I1 is going to be some of our molded silver parts, and Runner I2 is going to be some more of that molded silver, which is going to look very nice. And that is going to be it guys, as you can see, a ton of parts, but let me go ahead and get this all put together and then we'll see how it looks. Hey guys, just a reminder that USA Gundam Store and myself are currently putting on the Battle Log contest for you guys. So if you've not heard about that or if you haven't entered yet, you can still enter. The deadline for the contest is April 22nd. If you'd like to enter and want to hear all the details about the contest, there will be a link down in the video description below. So check that out and looking forward to seeing all your guys' entries. Now, back to the video. 
All right guys, so here is the kit all built out and just want to say that I apologize that I'm quite late on this review. Probably at this point you guys all know that this is a fantastic kit and so you really don't need me to tell you that, but it is a really fantastic kit as you guys will see throughout the review. The details and the part separation on it are really, really nice. I mean, if you've built the RG New Gundam, then you should have a pretty good idea of what to expect from this. It's just like that. It's just as good as that. But with this one, one thing that I do want to put to the test is the funnels and just the added weight in general, how much that's going to have an effect on the kit just because it is a bulkier design and it has a lot more going on especially on the backpack so we'll see how the kit holds up. Let's first just go ahead and check out the accessories. So for our hand options we've got the closed fists right there. We've also got a set of open expressive hands here with a joint in the wrist to be able to bend those forward and back. We've got holding hands for your beam sabers and a trigger finger hand for the right side only for your beam rifle or bazooka. Here's the beam rifle, looks very nice with the white, gray, and the silver parts all there working together. As you can see, there's a peg in the handle, so when you've got this held in the hand, you shouldn't have any problems with that nice fixed pose hand. You can store this on the kit too by flipping out this little tab here on the side. And if you move all the backpack parts out of the way, here on the back skirt there's a little panel. You slide this down and you can plug the rifle onto there for storage right there. And you've got your bazooka and where the front handle will move forward and back. Once again, you can see you got a slot in there for firm assembly in with the hand. This can extend out for when it's in use to make it even longer, but for storage, you can close it up like that, fold the handle down, and then this connects onto the backpack as well with this little loop bit right there. It's getting pretty crowded on the back, but as you can see, this little gray tab folds down and then you can connect this right up into there. And that fits onto there, but like I said, getting very crowded on the backside. Let's move it back around to the front and take a look at the shield. Once again, this is all actual color separated, so there aren't any stickers, color correcting stickers anyway. Obviously, I put a couple of the marking stickers on there just so you guys can get an idea of how those look. And of course, the stickers on the white plastic are gonna look good. Any stickers on the blue plastic, you are gonna see the outline of the stickers there a little bit, so not too bad, but you know, if you do wanna end up using them, there are a lot, of course it is an RG. But just to focus on the color separation, it is really cool how they separated that out. The only problem is if you wanted to make this one solid color, then you're gonna have to fill in those lines and putty that and then sand that and try to make this all into one solid piece instead of having these broken pieces like that from the color separation. But around on the back side, we got lots of nice detail there, including the little rockets, which are also just molded in gray. This just plugs onto the back of the arm with a little ball joint there like that. We've also got an attachment piece, which we'll use to attach this onto an action base. And then for our beam sabers, you've got a few different options here. You've got the one, which is stored in the forearm. Fold this front part down, open this, up like that and there's one of your beam saber handles alternatively here on the backpack this part is supposed to open up and your beam saber handles are stored up in there although i find it kind of difficult to do you're supposed to slide this to the front before you lift it up and there's just nothing really to grip onto so it's kind of difficult to get it there we go i got this one off and end up knocking off the v-fin in the meantime but it slides forward and then you can slide this up and then take the beam saber handle out of there so i'm just going to go ahead and take one of these out of here right now so that I can use that later on. Any movable parts like that do make for a cool gimmick on a kit like this, but it is a little bit of a pain. Now, speaking of gimmicks, we do have one more here on the backpack. Well, a few more, but this slides out here, the stabilizer in the middle, and slide that out and lift this part up a little bit, fold that back down and close this back up to have the tail stabilizer standing straight up like that if you didn't want to have it in its normal position like that. Another armor gimmick that you're going to have is going to be here on the back of the head. That armor panel at the back is going to prevent you from moving the head too far upwards, but you can actually move that up a little bit. And again, it's going to be kind of difficult for my large fingers, but you can tilt that up and that is going to allow you to move the head farther upwards for more articulation there. For opening the cockpit, you've got two options. You can open just this small little door right here that just slides open like that. And there's no seated pilot figure or anything inside, but you can just open that up. Your other option for the cockpit would just be to lift up this whole section here on the front like that. And you can actually lift up a little bit farther, but it does come disattached kind of easily. So just be careful to move that gently and you can lift it further upwards like so. Next armor opening hatch gimmick is here in the shoulder. This part here on the side will lift up slightly can tilt that up like so, and then this part will slide out a little bit like that for your open shoulder armor. Pop that back in, pop that back down. This blue panel here on the back skirt also opens up, and again, I would kind of recommend you guys just like have a knife handy or something to pull some of these panels out, because it's kind of tight, but 
That just opens up like so, exposing that vent inside there. We'll pop that back down to close it. And around here on the leg, we've got a lot of moving parts as this main center panel will open up first. You can open that up and it sort of moves upwards like so. And then these side panels also will open up. And it's gonna look like that, kind of exposing some of the frame there. And then you can take it a step further. This part here on the top also opens up like so where you've got this extra thruster bell that you'll be able to see more. This lower part also opens back like that. And then these side parts will open out to the side. So this whole section all opens up like that, which does look very cool, exposing a lot of that inner frame detail there in the leg, which is really nice. Just to go over some more of the articulation, of course, we already saw about the stabilizer in the back that moves up and down and sort of transforms as I showed you guys. The main binders will move in and out. You can also rotate them up and down each individual funnel. We'll also rotate forward and back as well, but these do tend to fall out kind of easily, so just be careful with those. Really cool thing about the third funnel is when you move this up, it also moves this vent here at the end at the same time. So if you'll see that moves along with that funnel, which is very cool. Now, although the backpack is very heavy, we do have some pretty nice articulation here in the midsection, forward and back. And then our hip section basically has a gimmick where you can transform the hip section by moving these parts around, opening this, slide the hips forward, pull this center part down. And while we're here, we can take a moment to just notice all the very nice detail up underneath the skirting sections with the silver parts and then just all the mechanical detail up inside there. It does look really, really nice. Flip this part up push this part back up, move this forward section out like that. Then this whole section of the hips should drop down. Again, it's very tricky to do with so much stuff going on. So you're gonna wanna transform this and then kind of put everything back together. So close that back up to lock it and then move this front part back up into place like that. And then it should be locked into place in this dropped position. And basically what this is gonna allow you to do is to bring the legs all the way forward further forward to sort of simulate more of an ab crunch when basically what it's doing is just kind of tricking the eye by just dropping the hips down and forward more. Honestly, I think it ends up looking a bit strange because now the hips look too far away from the body. It looks kind of weird depending on kind of the angle that you're looking at it, I guess. Anyway, just going back around to the backpack here, the fuel tanks are on a double joint. One is a ball and joint and one, one is a joint that will just move up and down like that. So you've got lots of movement around here for these. Almost too much to be honest. I wish they were kind of a little bit more secure in there. Right now they do kind of feel like a little bit floppy as you're moving stuff around. As you can see, the joint doesn't really hold up the weight of them all that well. The shoulder armor will move up and down. You can bring the arm up pretty high and you can pull this joint out a little bit away from the body to get even further movement upwards like that, very high. Or you can bring the arm all the way to the front pretty nice and far just by extending that joint there in the shoulder all the way. Popping that back into place, we got some rotation there at the top of the bicep. A double joint in the elbow to give you a nice full bend there. The wrist is just on a ball joint. The front skirts will move up and down. Again, just some really nice silver parts up inside there. The side skirts also will move up and down. You can rotate those side to side. The back skirts will also move on their own separately like that. You got some really nice movement when you bend the knee. The thigh armor separates and the knee armor separates as well. You got some nice mechanical detail here underneath the metallic silver parts. You have the like metallic orange part piston in, up inside there. And it's all in all really nice color separation with all the details and everything here on the legs. They look really good. The ankles work really nicely forward and back with some separation of the toe joint like that. And then the whole foot will bend in the middle like so. You can also rotate this side to side. So if you wanted to keep it on the ground, you should be able to get a pretty wide stance out of this while keeping the feet flat on the ground. And then up underneath the feet, some really nice detail there as well. And then there's the funnels themselves, which again, really nice color separation on these. If you wanted to paint them a single color though, you're gonna have to deal with some separations in the plastic. So these just open up and if you don't have any effect parts or anything else to use with them, I mean, there's not really too much you can do with these. Basically, they're just gonna be on the backpack and that's it. But if you have the effect parts uh, set that you can use for these, that just plugs right down there into the background. You can have these zooming around. There's also some third-party effect parts sets that you can get for these. So I've seen some nice ones out around there. I don't have any on hand to test it, but you can see there's plenty of detail in here with these. For me personally, I just always prefer them stored on the backpack anyway, so that's how I'm gonna keep them, but they do look very nice. 
Now, as you may have noticed at the start of the review, I was using the fuel tanks as basically a kickstand to help it to stand up. It's not absolutely needed. It can actually stand up on its own without using them, but with the fuel tanks being as long as they are, they do make for a very handy kickstand to hold the kit up if you're just having it on the ground, not having it up on an action base. That said, definitely having it up on an action base is gonna be the way to go to really fully display this kit, I think, unless you wanna just go for the standard, like, badass standing pose, which I am quite partial to. But for a kit like this, where you have so much much going on with the design you really kind of want to show it off in a really cool dynamic pose I think it does look really nice up on an action base you basically got your standard loadout of accessories with the beam rifle bazooka beam sabers shield nothing really too crazy there unless you go for the p-bandai hyper mega bazooka option set which I will hopefully get my hands on in the future but that said, the accessories are really unique, like with the color separation on the shield, the beam rifle design is very unique and cool as well. It looks really great. The bazooka, even it's just a pretty straight, straightforward bazooka, it looks great. You are going to have a little bit of trouble with that, just with the back end of that, just kind of colliding with the uh, funnel racks on the back, basically. So you have to do some strategic posing to get that to look quite right. But obviously with as much articulation that's built into this kit, getting it into basically any pose that you could want shouldn't really be too much of an issue. I'm not really experiencing anything in the way really of weight issues with this at the moment that said I could definitely see how over time this kit's probably gonna get some sag in the back with the backpack sort of pulling it back in the waist section so I would definitely recommend maybe trying to tighten up the section in the torso that allows for your kind of stomach crunch or backwards bend of the stomach section you basically don't want it to bend backwards because unless that's the pose that you're going for but the backpack is going to weigh on the upper half of this kit obviously so it's just something to look out for. But of course, this kit is amazing. The color separation, the details, everything on it looks fantastic, as you guys can see there. Highly recommend it. If you've built the RG New Gundam, definitely check it out. If you've never built the RG New Gundam, I mean, go for whichever version you like, the new or the high new, but they're both really fantastic models. And just design-wise, I really like how this one, how they kind of went uh, for like a mix sort of in between the two different versions of the Master Grade, the original and the Verka. It's got as like the chunk of the design of the Verka, but it's got the color scheme of the original Master Grade, so I kind of like how they kind of went in between the two of those to give us the design here for the RG. It's kind of the best of both worlds, but I don't know, do you guys prefer the more purplish color scheme of the Verka design, or do you like it in blue? Which version of the High New is your favorite, or which color scheme of the High New is your favorite, or which, what do you like in terms of just like the overall aesthetic, the look of it? I definitely prefer the Verka when it comes to the Master Grade kits, so I'm glad that the RG has plenty of chunk in the design. I really like that aspect of the design of this one, but let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. If you guys want to check out the kit for yourself, of course you can do that at USA Gundam Store. The link will be down in the video description, as well as the coupon code for you guys to use, so check that out. Thanks so much for checking out the video here today. If you'd like to leave a comment, subscribe, like the video, it's all greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much. Until next time, hope you're all having a great day. Bye guys.